Welcome to Cambridge House Live. I'm Bridget Anderson. I'm joined by Michael Berry of discoveryinvesting.com. Nice to see you again, Michael. Good to see you, Bridget. Let's start off with the attention that has been on the markets. There's been record high stock prices, a lot of concentration and focus on the U.S. economic recovery. What makes you say that this is a false recovery? Well, for one thing, we're seeing the money supply itself is shrinking. It's shrinking here in the, in the U.S., it's shrinking in Canada, and it's shrinking in Europe. So there's really no real sustainable growth that I see. I don't see sustainable growth in this, in this economy in either Canada or the U.S. And without sustainable growth, profits are, are not real. So what we're really seeing, I think, in, in terms of the stock market itself, is that the Fed has been printing money. They've blown up their balance sheet to $3 billion. This is the Federal Reserve in the U.S. And consequently, uh, they pumped a lot of money into the large cap stock market. The, tri the TSXV uh, and the, and, the, and the Canadian markets are down. And in fact, you say this is the third bubble after tech and housing. So yes. what defines this as a bubble? Uh, a bubble is basically something that's gone on a long time in one way, like a price rise for a long time that is, that is not sustainable. It's not fundamentally sustainable. And I think that's the way the large cap market is now. Uh, it's, it's sort of a year and a half to two years in the making. It's... Uh, the Dow itself is 16,000. I think the absolute top on the Dow is 17,000, 17,500. And then I think we're going to have a real big pullback in that time. I want to go back to some of your comments about, uh, about QE. And we've seen some tapering. And you, in fact, present to the US Federal Reserve coming up in a couple of weeks. Right. So do you think that, that there's going to be more tapering? And will it actually, will it do what it needs to do? Or have we come to a point where they've kind of backed themselves in a corner? Yes, I think they. I think that's an exact, uh, very good representation of what's happened. Uh, they've printed up a couple of billion dollars. They've bought up bonds. They've expanded their balance sheet with all these bonds, mortgage backs, and they're going to have to. They're going to have to sell those off at some point in time. So the Fed has a problem. If it does it too quickly, you're going to have much higher interest rates, mm -hmm. and that that can't happen. That would be very bad for the economy. We'd go into a recession. And the recession with this much debt load isn't a good thing. If they do it too slowly, we'll have inflation, real inflation. So the Fed has a, the Fed has a real problem, and Janet Yellen, the new chairperson of the Fed, has got her hands full. And then there's also a risk of deflation, too. Uh, this is the risk that worries everyone. The Fed, any central banker, is worried about deflation because deflation, in, in a deflation, you, the, the nominal amount of bonds stays the same, but the real value of the bonds increases. Whereas in an inflation, bond values decrease. The dollar goes down. When the dollar increases, you're paying, you're paying back your debt in, in higher dollars. So, so it's, it's a real worry for the Fed and it's a real worry for the federal government because their taxes, their tax receipts go down. Consumers, on the other hand, initially love deflation because they think they're gonna have lower prices in the future, so they start to save. And once consumers start to save, the whole consumer economy starts to slow. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bad scenario that's difficult for the Fed to handle. Is there a way out? There is a way out. Uh, the way out is going to depend upon Janet Yellen's intellect and her vice chairman, who is Stanley Fisher, who trained all of these economists, mm -hmm. trained Bernanke and all of these people. Um, but it's going to be difficult for them to get out without a recession. I think we probably have a recession on our hands. And then we'll have a turnaround. I think there's an 18 month to four year window of deleveraging still left that is getting rid of the debt. And then you're going to see uh, you're going to see us take off. So I'm not terribly bearish in the long term. Mm -hmm. I think that the commodity sector will go up, but in the short term we've got some real challenges in front of us. Well, and one of the things I want to ask you about one of the indicators I think that you were recently speaking about is uh, the M1. So maybe you could tell us a little bit more what that is and then what it indicates for you. Yeah, the, the money supply in a healthy economy is growing because as the Fed puts money into the banking system, the fractional banking system lends out 90% of the money and it's lent out again and again and again. And so consequently, the money supply goes like this. People are taking loans, people are buying cars, people are buying houses, mm -hmm. the economy is growing. And that is not happening now. In fact, the money supply 
the base money supply that the Fed creates is growing, but the actual money supply, the multiplier, the money multiplier is less than 1.0, so it's 0.73, which means that every dollar that's going out isn't creating more dollars. And so the actual money supply in the US and Europe is falling. The money supply is contracting. And that's usually a characteristic of either disinflation or deflation. And deflation is characterized by slower growth, falling prices, um, sometimes a recession, but basically uh, a difficult economic scenario until the debt gets wiped out and then we start a new cycle, we start a new credit cycle. And how do you see the situation in Europe? Has it, uh, is it about in the same situation as the U.S.? Uh, it's, in a way it's similar. Europe has come out of its recession, but it's very slow growth. I call it a full recovery, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but basically the, the Europeans have the same problem in terms of money supply. The money supply is falling. So the IMF this week, I think on the 15th of January, the chairwoman of the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, basically said, we are worried. Do not do your quantitative easing too quickly, Federal Reserve and, and uh, European Central Bank. Slow down, make sure you've got good pegs under the economy before you stop the easing. So I think Janet Yellen's going to do this very carefully and very slowly. Okay, well, let's take a couple of minutes and talk about uh, metals then. What are you seeing as some good investments for 2014? Well. I like silver and I like gold, and I know that doesn't sound right when I'm talking about the possibility of deflation. Mm -hmm. But silver's down 35% and gold's down almost 30%. And some of these companies, Gold Corp, for example, have been really hurt. They're down 50%. So I think it's time for investors to start thinking about uh, buying some of these, some of these really, really cheap metals now. And, and looking for the recovery in the next two or three years. So do you think the decline is over then? Oh, I do, I do. If you looked at the uh, TSXV, the, the Venture Exchange, this looks like it's bottoming now. It has been absolutely murdered over the last year. And as we all know, everybody mm -hmm. here at the conference knows. So I, I hope we're at a bottom. I'm waiting, I'm waiting to see. It looks like it is, and I'm gonna present this in, here at the show in the next little while. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us, Michael. Thank you very much. Good to be here again and see you. Great to see you. Good